I just wanted to update everyone what we're working on for 2019. We have some tree oyster plates. This is pearl oyster. This is uh, bear's head or bear's tooth, otherwise known as Horatium ramosum or recently called Horatium coloroids. Playing around with a little bit of Namiko. All of these mycelium strains, they, they all look quite different. This is chestnut. And we have our lion's mane back here, just starting to grow. Then we have some plates of, uh, this is cordyceps, kingstrophaeria, and blue oyster right here. We have actually a couple jars in Namiko. We have two strains that I'm playing around with right now. This is a strain from Cap and Stem. Eric gave this to me years ago and I'm just starting to grow this right now. That's compared to a wild clone from Michigan I got from Ryan Paul Gates. And the wild strain is actually a lot slower. And then we have some Kingstrophaeria already in jars as well. And that's starting to grow. It's pretty slow. And I always have clients that want to do garden patches, so I always try to have some of this on hand here. Uh, we just expanded our king oyster. So we like to grow on Sada spawn. And this was inoculated a few days ago. So it's just starting to run through the sawdust. One thing we're noticing is that with our lab we don't have too much airflow in here and we have these wooden shelves so because we have such a tight space as this room fills up can generate quite a bit of heat and supplemented blocks or sawdust the mycelium doesn't run that fast through these so they don't give off as much heat as grain spawn would so we're noticing that our grain spawn will like likes to overheat especially when we pack you know, a big section like this all at the same time. We don't have that much airflow in here. So we're gonna need to get maybe like a circulation fan just at the base there if we wanna start working with grain spawn. But in the meantime, a solution for us is to use sawdust spawn. It takes about four to five weeks to colonize, but our contamination rate is extremely low. And what we've contributed to that is the mycelium, It has difficulty colonizing the fine particles of the hardwood fuel pellets so it just takes a lot longer to grow and because of that it doesn't give off as much heat and the bags don't overheat because spawn can be really sensitive especially in grain spawn so we're focusing on sawdust spawn right now with most of our species and what we have on deck we have more king oyster right here we have our tree oyster up here as well and these were just inoculated on the 7th and then the next wave we're going to be doing the lion's mane, namiko, chestnut, we'll do some pearl oyster, probably some more tree oyster and we might eat, we have a few more king oyster back there we might do that and then we're going to start thinking about our summer strains so I have one plate here I'm going to show you today how to clean up a plate. This is our Aspen Oyster. This is actually a local strain that we collected, Throtus uh, populinus. And I actually haven't had too much success with this strain. And that's like maybe three years ago I tried to grow this. So now that we're playing around with high yielding substrates, we're going to be focusing on the Masters Mix, which is the 50% soy hull sawdust combo and I want to revisit this strain this is a beautiful pearl white oyster strain that didn't really cluster so we are getting single mushrooms growing and I'm curious now that I have a little bit more knowledge in cultivation if we use a higher yielding substrate can we get this mushroom to cluster because it does cluster in nature and I'll flash a photo up just to show you guys what this looks like this is a really beautiful wild edible that I really want to grow this year that's called the Aspen Oyster. So I'll show you, how, I'll show you guys how to clean this up and I'm also going to be doing some orders so we're pulling some test tubes out and today is all about culture work so stay tuned guys I'm going to teach you guys what we do in the lab and how to save a plate like this 
if you get the dread, dreaded trigoderma, not a big deal. Or this is probably actually penicillin mold. But either way, if you get mold on your plates, it's not a big deal. Okay, so I have all these orders. We're going to be doing these cultures today. I like to write them down on the glass just to keep everything organized. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I have 27 plates I gotta do today, but I actually don't have enough plates to do this order, so some of these I won't do. I just ordered a thousand plates, and they're gonna be coming in next week from Amazon. Uh, if you guys want a really good deal for plates, I'll leave a link just at the top of the screen. I think it's $87 for 500 plates American. So I, I just have to make sure I leave one extra plate, maybe two, probably two plates. I'll get this cleaned up and transferred as well. So I'm going to write that down as well. So basically, I'm just going to get all the test tubes out of the fridge and get these out. And then just kind of pull from the test tubes into these plates and start crossing stuff off. The way I like to do it is I keep my transfer test tubes on the top shelf up there. That way, if there's any kind of contamination, I can go back to that test tube and I know there might be something in it and I, I can take it out of my culture library or at least try to isolate some, some good mycelium out of that test tube and just be aware that there might be something wrong with it. And then we'll get a collection of test tubes that I've transferred up there and then every maybe three weeks or so, they go back into cold storage and I pull them out as needed. Because we're not a normal mushroom farm, I'm, I'm usually dealing with about 75 different strains at any given time. So it really gives me an opportunity to go through all my strains in my library and see how things are going and make sure that everything is doing well. And if I need to make more backups, it's as simple as just transferring onto a plate and then transferring active mycelium back into usually three test tubes is what I do. So I usually do three test tubes for backup storage and that can be between anywhere from six to uh, six to twelve week or six to twelve months to to every couple of years. It really depends on the strain. Okay, so now that I have all the test tubes that I need to complete this order. I'm going to start transferring a little bit of tissue into these plates. I really like this, this electric uh, sterilizer that I use for my scalpel. All you have to do is hold your scalpel once this is red hot inside for about five seconds and then it's completely sterile. I'm going to cool the knife in the plate and then go into the test tube and transfer. But I'm going to make sure that I wipe all my surfaces down with alcohol. I like to buy 99% isopropyl alcohol that I dilute 50-50 with distilled water and then I use a spray bottle that just it works great in the lab it's probably the best thing you can do so I'm going to spray down this table start working on these cultures and you guys can just see how I do that then we're going to speed it up and we'll get to how to isolate this without contaminating at the end of this video have short sleeves or you gotta roll up your sleeves. You know, you don't, uh, you don't need to be a completely sterile. It's all about good technique and just making sure that your surfaces are wiped down with alcohol. Just like that. So someone someone mentioned in one of my previous videos is is how do I store these? If I wanted to store these for long term, I can just leave the sleeve in the plates like this. And then I just tuck in the bottom and then put it on my top shelf in, a, in an area in my lab that doesn't get 
much temperature fluctuation so I can limit condensation. And then if you do it right, these plates can actually sit in my lab without any HEPA air running or anything like that, just like in a room. And it can last for about two to three months. The plates aren't going to dry out, they're not going to contaminate, and then you can just use as needed. So it's a lot of work to do agar work. So I like to do about 80 to 100 plates in one shot and then and then make some more after that. And it's a good way to do it. So if I don't need a lot, they can just sit up there and I can use as needed. So I'm just going to pick one of these at random. I like to write down on the glass what I'm working with. So this is Kingsterferia. Strain code is 009. It was done October 2nd of 2018. And this is on generation 5. If I can keep track of the generations, I do. Wipe, wipe down with some alcohol. Take this parafilm wax. This is a breathable tape. So that gets thrown out. And then, you know, I have a backup roll when I need it. And we'll just get to work. I'll show you how to do this. These plates were actually poured last night, and then they just sat here overnight. And then I, I just come in here when I'm going to do lab work again. And either I'm going to tuck them up in the storage, or I'm going to use them as I am right now. Okay. I like to wipe down the knife just to be safe, because I am going to stick the knife inside the test tube. Five seconds. So this is King Stropharia. And 009 is right here. I need one of those. So I'm going to do one transfer. And I like to put down the, as many plates in front of my test tube as I'm working with at the time. So I'm just going to cool this. Usually just two in the corner. I like to use the dull side of the knife. get a piece of mycelium just like that and then that just goes right in the center and that's it I usually like to have an extra piece of paper towel here that I can wipe all the uh, bits of mycelium and agar that stick to my knife and then one is for cleaning surfaces okay so I do it like that this gets parafilm I like four squares It's folded over. And you just kind of stretch and pull as you go. And you want to go around twice because over time this parafilm will dry out and crack. So two, going around twice ensures that nothing is going to contaminate on this plate. And then if I were to ship these, once they're colonized, they're going to go in a Ziploc bag to further protect them. All you need is one square for the test tube. Again, you're going to fold it, back off the cap just a little bit so that some air can exchange. And then air is just going to breathe through this air film here. I'm going to relabel what this was. date is the 13th. This actually becomes G6 because it goes up one generation. And I'm just going to store this up here. These are all test tubes that I've already transferred. So that's it guys. I'm going to run you guys through the, the time lapse with uh, the rest of this work. And then we're going to come back to this Aspen oyster, I'm going to show you guys how we save this culture so that I can start growing it in the spring.
the end of this video. <clears throat> this happens from time to time. You get a little bit of contamination as your cultures get older. This was probably, I wouldn't say my fault. I would say there's probably something in the dish. I did a good transfer, but something started growing just to the, the left. So this is uh, most likely a penicillin type mold. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of the Brontus populinus culture just on the opposite side. We're gonna try to open it so that the mycelium is closest to the fresh air. And I'm gonna be careful on how I open the plate. Whenever you're dealing with some contamination, you wanna do that last. You wanna go cleanest to dirtiest. So this is the last thing I'm gonna do for today. And like I said, I didn't have enough plates to, to really do everything I wanted to. So I'm just gonna do one transfer from this into that plate there and just try to save the culture. And then I'll be growing this sometime in the spring, probably around May time. I should have something to post on the YouTube channel. But anyways, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Really easy. My hands are clean. See, none of this stuff is really that difficult once you understand how everything works. It's really just, you know, getting all the equipment set up and just trial and error and try to figure out, figure out how stuff works. But you can definitely save a culture when there's any kind of contaminant. And I've had plates a lot worse than this and I've still saved it. The same thing, five seconds, we're gonna sterilize the knife. There we go. And I'm just gonna be really careful and try to get a culture here. Square. That goes right in there. And that's it. So that's going to conclude our video. Hope you guys learned something today about how to do cultures. If you guys have any questions, by all means, leave your comments below. And again, I do sell cultures, so if you guys are interested, just shoot me an email at bcalo at wtfmushrooms.com. I'll send you guys my strain list. It's only $25 a plate. Anyways, we'll catch you guys in the next video.